news coming out of Moore, Oklahoma this morning after so much devastation yesterday. As we take a look at some of the video that uh, photographer Sean Carpenter and I shot overnight, it really gives you a great sense of exactly what so many people are dealing with here in Moore. Debris everywhere, uh, a layer of insulation, uh, a thick layer of mud over so much uh, that we drove through. We just arrived in town and that was the first thing you noticed was, was just the, uh, the debris covered fields, uh, the streets covered in mud. Also, as we came into town on I-35, uh, there were broken gas lines. You could smell that natural gas from the interstate. Now, interstate's still open, public traffic moving back and forth. Now, the exits to Moore are closed, but uh, that I-35 corridor is finally open. As I mentioned, a lot of folks been working overnight, not only law enforcement, not only first responders, but volunteers here from the greater Oklahoma City area. Earlier, we caught up with some of them, and let's hear what they had to say in their experience from trying to help some of these tornado victims. Well, were they were they grateful? Were they just kind of in shock? Tell me what, how, how were they reacting? It was total shell shock. They were walking around with blank stares, like, <laughs> Uh, zombies. I mean, they just could not, you could tell they couldn't believe what happened. What's the very latest? Where does, where do those efforts stand right now? Well, we have uh, hundreds of rescuers that are here that showed up on the scene. Uh, we immediately sectioned off the city. We, we got an aerial, aerial view, if you will, of what the path of destruction was and then sectioned that off and immediately sent out our strike teams who went out and started making recovery efforts re, uh, rescue efforts uh, immediately. Uh, we know that one of the elementary schools was really hard hit uh, and so we, we focused a lot of our attention over there. Daniel, it is go time here at the Springdale Road Department. Take a look inside. These trucks all loaded up with beet juice and now it is time to get everything socked with sand and salt before these guys get out to start treating your roads. Seventeen guys from the Springdale Road Department pulled in just 30 minutes ago, and they'll be out treating the roads two hours before the winter weather even gets here. She's live tonight in Springdale. Daniel, it all starts right here. This is where the trucks pull in. They get stocked up with sand and salt, and then they get back on the road. And for the guys driving these trucks, it's a job they take very seriously. We do. Or I know I do. I feel like we're helping them. A lot of them may think that we're not. A lot of the citizens, I mean, you know, but we are. We're trying to help. We're trying to get it to where they can get around if they need to go. One road at a time. We'll probably be out all night long. Spreading sand, salt, and sodium chloride. We know our routes that we're doing. 900 miles of city streets. Going west first. From one side of the city. And then turn around and come all the way back across. After 16 years on the job, Alan Hervey says the technology just improved it 100%. And then they come up better, with all yeah. this new stuff in here, and it just it's making it a whole lot better and easier Airport. to do the streets and to stay out longer. Now the crews working right now will stay out on the roads all night and into the early morning hours. They tell me if the weather gets bad, they'll have another round of guys come in to keep those roads. It's the saddest of sights for a homeowner, and they witnessed it today in Cedarville. This is the biggest I've ever seen. I've been here 13 years, but I'm 73 years old. And I've seen fire and stuff, but nothing like this. The 911 call came in at 536 this morning. Volunteer firefighters did their best to fight the all-consuming fire, putting huge amounts of water on the flames as the 8,000 square feet of house and an apartment burned out of control. But it was a losing battle. It's probably going to be a total loss. Uh, the fire ran through the attic. You no know, it's pumping thousands of gallons of water on it. It just kept racing through the attic. Uh, luckily, nobody was injured. One neighbor couldn't believe what he saw when he opened the door. The whole house was flaming right next door, just 40, 50 feet away. So we started grabbing what we could and ran out the door, car keys and all, and didn't know if we was going to have to leave or not. He says his house was only saved because the wind was blowing away from his house. We're thinking the fire started in the heating unit in the attic. Uh, the gentleman, the homeowner, did say that he had had some problems with it and had it checked out. As if it wasn't bad enough, besides losing the entire family history in the home, even their car is gone. It was a hopeless feeling that you could see in every face of those who responded and for those who lived in the area. But this neighbor is very grateful firefighters kept it from getting any worse. Thank the Lord and the firemen, but uh, their home's completely ruined. 
but we're real thankful that ours is not. Appreciate everybody. Sierra, I actually want you to take a look here southbound on I-540 by exit 72. You can actually see basically paramedics just arrived on the scene right now. Some a woman basically pulled over and she basically slid off the road here into the ditch and they're actually getting ready to take somebody away. Just gives you an idea just how dangerous it is out here. Force them outside, get there! Kelly Rolliard plays for the University of Arkansas women's soccer team. Come on, Peyton, step! Get up! She can be a tough coach on the players during the Razorback soccer camp. Move, girls! But her biggest battle this week is with Mother Nature. My team right now, they're exhausted. They've, they're not used to playing twice to three times a day. Exhausted for good reason. Much of our area is under a heat advisory. And with a sport that plays all their games outdoors and practices here too, the conditions can take a toll on the players' bodies. Every 15 minutes we have water breaks for them. We provide Gatorade. But head soccer coach Colby Hale says there's more to it. Water is just one part of hydration education. It's just the little decisions, getting enough sleep, it's all intertwined. So we just talked to them about making sure when you have a choice between drinking the Coke or the water, you're, you're choosing the water. They also use recovery shakes after every session. It helps their bodies recover faster. And if they're not hungry, too bad. They have to eat to ensure they're taking every step to prevent heat exhaustion. The bottom line, according to Coach Hale, taking care of their bodies all day, not just when they step on the soccer field. Turn it back. You have time. As for this player, what she's learned about staying hydrated from Coach Hale, she's passing that down to some future Razorbacks. Just a few hours ago, it closed for hours after a plane had to make an emergency landing. 4029's Emily Maha tells us where the plane is right now. She's live tonight in Rogers. Daniel, crews from the Rogers Fire Department just finished cleaning off their trucks. These trucks have been out on the runway all day. And take a look. See those hangers back there? That's where the broken plane is right now. It was belly down on the runway. Crews got the call a little before 1 this afternoon. Aircraft down. This plane was in the air, flying without a problem. When the pilot realized there was an issue with his landing gear, the wheels wouldn't drop down the way they're supposed to. The pilot was the only one inside. Crews say he wasn't hurt when the plane made an emergency landing. He was out walking around. Crews used airbags that are... Kind of designed just for, for lifting planes like that out on the wings. Once the plane was lifted... High enough that uh, they were able to get it back on the, running, on the uh, landing gear and, and towed off runway. The fire department says things like this don't happen a lot. They tell us crashes and landings like this only happen about eight to ten times a year. But they do tell us they do practice just last fall that had a training drill for days just like today. Live in Rogers, Emily Maha, 4029 News.